Hi there. So in this video, I just wanted to quickly run through my experience printing with this stuff, which is a PETG or PETG. So I'm looking to print some uh, bed supports for my Ender 5 Pro. And a lot of people recommending using this stuff because they say it's a bit more uh, hard wearing uh, than normal PLA. So yeah, let's uh, start having a play with this and see if we can get this to print. So I started off with a first layer test. I'll put a link to these files in the description. And this just helps me understand some of the temperatures that I need to print at. Now PETG requires higher temperatures. So first thing I did was uh, whack the nozzle and the bed temperatures up. So I started around 230 on the nozzle and the bed at around 70. And I noticed that at those temperatures, uh, even going up to 80, it wasn't really sticking at all. So it was just basically uh, lifting off and then just causing a, a stringy mess. Once I got up to about 90, I'd noticed that there was um, an improvement. So I kind of stuck with that and then just started playing around some other settings. I went up to 240 as a maximum. I didn't really want to go any higher because of the risk uh, of what people say about the Bowden tube around that potentially melting. Um, I do have the uh, the version that has the Teflon lined tube, but I didn't really want to push that to anywhere close to sort of 250, 260, where they say is kind of the, the maximum for those. So I kind of limited it at 240 and just went with that. Uh, then tried it at a few different speeds. Um, noticed that if I did go slower, that I think the quality was slightly better. So yeah, basically what this has told me is is that I want the bed somewhere between 80 90 degrees and and the nozzle probably needs to be somewhere between 230 and 240. Um, playing around with the Z offset uh, despite trying to level my bed I was found that I just needed to have that slight bit of Z offset configured on on the first layer just to make sure that it kind of really sticks down properly and that value I was using was a minus 0.1 and that's just using a standard layer height of 0.2. So yeah, let's uh, jump onto Cura now and run through all the settings that uh, I ended up with. So here we are inside a Cura. And what I did was created a new materials profile uh, for the pet G that I was using. So if you go to manage materials or you can do it from the preferences menu. I took the generic PETG settings and then I just made some modifications based on the brand of PETG that I was using in this case uh, Sun Lu. So I ended up with a temperature of around 240. I found that if I went any lower there were some noises like clicking coming from the extruder which I figured was the extruder not being able to push the filament through quick enough which I put down to two things really, the, the print speed as well as the actual temperature so that it wasn't able to melt the filament quick enough at the lower temperatures. So 240 seemed to resolve that. And I actually did that during the prints by just uh, doing the settings whilst it was printing and just went up to a higher temperature and found that the clicking noise from the extruder uh, finished, certainly on the outer layers. Uh, there were some other issues with the extruder that um, I'll cover just after we've gone through these settings. So 85 degrees is the build plate temperature I settled with. Um, I normally do the initial layer slightly higher, so around 90. And the retractions distance and speed, I played around with these a bit, but found that it didn't make too much difference. So I left these at the default. And another big change was the fan speed. I found I had less problems with things like stringing and those types of issues um, with the fan speed turned off and I think also it gives a much stronger print uh, when the fan speed is off as it means that the filament doesn't cool down as quickly and gives it a better layer adhesion. So as well as uh, creating the custom material I also uh, created a profile with some additional changes. So if we look here I've created one for the PET G and as I mentioned before we have the uh, 240 temperature, we have the um, build plate uh, initially 90 and then drop it down to 95. 
and um, I've also lowered the print speed down to about 60 because if it was any higher then I found that you'd start getting problems with the extruders starting to skip. Um, as well as that I also noticed that if you did the infill too quickly then you had similar problems so I had to drop that down as well. Um, and other than that as you can see print cooling is turned off um, and yeah the Z offset which I typically have a minus 0 0.1 just to help give that initial layer a bit more squish so that was pretty much what I ended up with and that got me to the point where I was starting to get some quite good prints with the PET-G there was one issue now on the extruder that I'm just going to uh, quickly go through so here's the extruder on my Ender 5 Pro and the problem I had was related to the tension of the stepper motor when it's pulling the filament through and in this case with the pet g because it's a bit softer i found that uh, if this spring was too tight it was forcing the uh, this cog to kind of bite into the pet g deforming it to the point that as it was going through the uh, tube to the uh, hot end that it was uh, causing some uh, blockages so what I found was, in order to stop the problems uh, during the prints, was I actually had to slacken this screw off. It was actually tightened all the way down and it was compressing this spring. So just by turning it like this now, this uh, seems to be giving it enough tension so that it can pull the filament through, but doesn't kind of deform it in a way uh, that was causing the problems. And that seemed to make quite a big difference. And here we are finally printing something out with PET-G. This is a uh, support arm that's going to go under the bed just to stop it flexing so much particularly here at the front where the bed tends to wobble a bit more when you're doing larger things like this. So I've already printed out some pieces here that came out pretty good. Um, no real issues, just a bit of stringing but it's to be expected and got the back plate here. So yeah hopefully um, these settings will work going forward. So I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching.